Hey everybody, Chef Lori is here back with another recipe. Today we are making a crab stuffed flounder. Let's jump right in and get cooking. For our crab stuffed flounder, we don't have a lot of ingredients. We're fundamentally going to make a crab mixture that's going to look somewhat like a crab cake, but not exactly, just a little bit, and we're going to roll it up into our flounder fillets. The reason we're going to roll our flounder fillets is because these are very thin, as you can see, and we really can't exactly uh, butterfly them and stuff them. There's nothing to stuff, there's nowhere to stuff, so we're just going to put them in and make rolls out of them. So first thing we're going to do is we have two cups of crab meat here, okay? To that I'm going to add some diced yellow onions. This is a half a yellow onion I'm putting in here, okay? I love onions, yellow onions are my favorites. We're going to also add, of course, some garlic. Okay, I don't use garlic powder or onion powder in this recipe, but if you don't have any garlic or onions on hand, feel free to just use powder. That's fine as well. These are some sweet orange peppers I've cut up. Sometimes I use green bell peppers. Those work as well. But today I wanted to try something different, so we're doing sweet orange. And also we've got some cracker crumbs. Now you can use bread crumbs, you can use panko, whatever you would desire. But today, all I had on hand was some crackers, so I mashed them up in my food food processor and I'm putting them in here and that's just going to help this stick together a little bit. Now that all of that's there we're going to combine all these ingredients and we're going to add some seasoning to it. Can you see that? I do this first before the other things is because I want to make sure that I get the bread crumbs or the cracker crumbs thoroughly mixed throughout the meat. I'm using jumbo crab meat and I like jumbo crab meat because as you stir it and cook it the meat will break up. Now our seasonings today, we're going to start with some seasoned pepper. I love this. This is my favorite seasoning. I hope you can see that. I put seasoned pepper on everything. And I season to taste. So this is probably about a tablespoon of that. Then we're going to also use some chili powder because chili powder has great flavor in it. And it gives it a little kick, but you know how I am. I like, I like a little heat to it, but I don't want it to be too much. <laughs> this is some paprika. Paprika gives a nice smoky flavor as well. I've got some salt here. Make sure you use enough salt in there because you don't want this to taste bad. <laughs> we don't want it to be dry. Now I'm going to combine these again. Oh, this is looking good. See that? Now I'm going to add a little olive oil into this as well just to give some moisture to my crab mixture. Just to help it along a little bit. It's just about a tablespoon of olive oil in there tablespoon or teaspoon, just kind of eyeball it and see if it looks like you like it. We'll look at it before we're done to make sure we're happy with the consistency. See that? So this is not quite a crab cake. A crab cake would have a little bit more bread in it. I'm going to add some more crackers, crumbs to this, but a crab cake would have a little bit more bread crumbs in it and, you know, have be a little sturdier, but we're just trying to make a nice filling today. We do want it to stick together. Oh, that looks good. So we're going to add a a little bit more seasoning because I can tell this needs some more color to it. You know, the food should look like you want it to look. That's, one of, that's my main thing. It should look like you want it to look and hopefully it tastes like you want it to. I remember when I was a little girl in the kitchen with my grandma and I said, Grandma, how do you know when it's done? How do you know when it's right? And she looked at me and she said, taste it, baby. And it seems so simple yet profound. Now, I'm not going to taste this crab mixture even though it's done, but the point was, you can tell with your own five senses a lot of times if the food is right or not. See, now look how much better that looks. See? Even you can tell already that looks better. Oh, this is going to be good. Now we're going to add one egg to this, and the reason we're going to add an egg is that's going to help it stick together when it cooks up inside of our flounder. We don't want it falling apart. <laughs> you can beat your egg before you put it in, or you can just put it straight in and stir it around. That's what I'm doing today. I want you to see how quick and easy this can be. You can have a gourmet meal any day of the week, just like this. That looks really good, you guys. We should just patty these up and just have some crab cakes and call it a day. <laughs> but we won't. We're going to finish the dish. And last but not least, I'm going to add my second favorite seasoning, some red cayenne pepper. Because I like my food to have a little kick to it. I don't like it to be unnecessarily hot. I can't stand it when you eat something and it's just hot for no reason. It don't taste like nothing. Just just hot. That, that irritates me. So that's why I like to layer my flavors and build them throughout the dish. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. And if you don't like cayenne or if you don't like heat, that's okay. 
Don't put it in there. Make this dish your own. I'm just giving you a basic road map with some simple directions and you find your way to the destination. Okay, now look how good that looks. See the consistency there? The egg is mixed in there. See that? It's going to bake nicely. It's not going to be too dry. Here are our flounder fillets. We're going to season our meat. I'm always telling you that before you do anything. Season your meat, okay? We're just going to put some of that seasoned pepper on here and some salt on both sides before we roll it up because the meat just needs to be right. We're not going to reuse this salt anywhere else. Some salt and pepper. Push that in like I've talked about in the past. Flip them over. Today my butcher had very thin thin uh, flounder fillets. So we're going to roll these up because we can't exactly stuff them. They're just a little too thin for stuffing. There's nothing to butterfly. Season that meat good. Layer your flavors. Always layer your flavors. This is an easy meal. You can come home from work or whatever and put this together and it'll seem like you've been in the kitchen all day long just slaving over a meal. And little did they know you mixed it up in a bowl and stuffed it. All right, now we're going to stuff our flounder. So we're going to take this, take our filling. I like to stuff mine very full, and I don't mind if it oozes out the side, because when you eat my food, you're going to be full. You're not going to be hungry. You're going to need to wait to have dessert, because you're going to get full at my house. See that? Just like that. And then you're going to take your knife and cut a little hole so she can breathe. There we go. Okay, take the next one, same process. And anything we have left over in our filling here, that's all good. That's gravy. <laughs> well, it's not technically gravy, but <laughs> we can put some more breadcrumbs in it and bake it up and have ourselves some crab cakes, y'all. Telling you, that's how you stretch your food. See, my mother says I overstuff my food, but I've told y'all before she's from Alabama, so I think she knows what she's talking about. But even though she says I overstuff my things, she keeps coming back for more, so I'm not going to choose to get all hung up on it. Now I'm going to pour just a little bit of olive oil over the top of this, helping it along, because that'll make it pretty too. Pretty food's important. We're going to bake this on 350 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes till it's done, and then we're going to turn the oven on broil and let the top get nice and crispy. And we're gonna to try to make a nice sauce to go on top of this as well. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh, that looks good. Okay guys, here it goes into the oven. While our flounder is in the oven, we're going to make a garlic cream sauce to go on top of it that will really just pair beautifully with those flavors and it's gonna be delicious. Let's get going on our sauce. I've started by putting some garlic into some olive oil in our skillet just to get the flavors going. Making a cream sauce is very easy. You just want to mix heavy whipping cream with chicken broth. So we're going to start with two cups of cream. And about a half a cup of chicken broth. The chicken broth just breaks it up a little bit so the cream is not so rich. You're going to bring this to a boil and then add flour and whisk it together to get it to thicken up. And our cream sauce is done. We've added flour and thickened it up, added some garlic salt to intensify the flavor, and it's ready to go. We just need our meat to come out of the oven and we'll be all set. And here's our fish out of the oven. It looks wonderful. The house smells good. I put the broiler on for the last 10 minutes or so. Well, I'm sorry, five minutes just to get the top nice and golden brown. And look how beautiful this is. We're gonna take this out and taste a piece. We've also got our garlic cream sauce ready too. Oh, this looks delicious. Oops, it's so flaky, I'm tearing it up, you guys. <laughs> well, here we go. Let's hope, oh, didn't I burn myself? What's wrong with me, people? Oh, that looks beautiful. That looks beautiful. Now I'm moving fast, so that's why I picked it up like that. But anyway, I'm gonna take some of this garlic cream sauce, put that right on top of there. That's gonna make it taste even better. I love cream sauce and I like my sauce thick. 
so it can stick okay and then we'll sprinkle a little paprika on there just to make it give pretty and give it some color and let's give this a taste let's see the inside oh look at that isn't that beautiful i hope you can see that that is so beautiful oh this is going to taste so good I'm trying not to burn myself <laughs> mm, smells divine mm. If I could do the happy dance right now, I would. This is so good. Man. That's it, guys. It wasn't that hard. Nice, easy mail. It looks like I've been in the kitchen all day, but I haven't. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day and happy cooking.